part of the professional e-commerce website tutorial series okay in this part you're going to learn everything that has to do with the checkout.php page all right um if you have not watched the previous series please endeavor to do that check that out in my description box below okay and have a look at it all right um in this part the first thing i did here is to start session like always at the very top of the page session underscore start function included my database connection then the first condition here i checked if the session email if it is not empty then the rest of this code will run okay this session email is coming from the login page remember um in this website there are two sessions that's being stored okay the first one the shopping carts and the second one which is the session email all right so this session email has a, a value that's been passed to it in the login page as you can see right here okay it has this variable of what email variable so once the user logs in i won't talk much about this login page because i've done that tutorial before once the user logs in with their email address the session with an index name email has this value of the user's email address okay so that is what i passed it so if it checks if the user is logged in or not with this condition with the session if it is not empty so if that is so then i fetched everything in the users table where the email is equals to arch email this arch email is coming from this email right here okay so if the number of rows that in that belief is not equal to zero that means there is um there's a value that is being fetched there then i use the while loop to get all the whole values in the users table having that email okay as you can see here so in my users table i have all these values all right so I tend to fetch almost everything that is there. So I got the name, L name, first name, address, mobile, voucher price, former underscore price. I will, you, at the end of this tutorial, you understand where I'll be using those variables. Okay. So that is what it is. So then if this condition is not true, that means if the user is not logged in, else redirect the user towards the login page okay for example if we go over to our index page add the product to cart and maybe try to access the checkout page clicking by proceed to checkouts it will redirect me to where to login page because i'm not logged in yet okay so as you can see here in the login.php page when it i was redirected a variable was passed in the url okay like here she has a what a user with product equal to shopping cart i just added a random string here that will remind me that the user tried to access this checkout page without being logging in okay so that is what you have here so once i log in it will now take me where to the cart okay so this is why i checked it um, from the beginning once the user logs in it will check in the url with this uh, value this variable user with product if it's equal to this string which what i passed here so if it is equal to that string i will redirect the user toward to cart page function so this function here is the code this is where i have the function okay redirect to cart page location is cart.php then exit all right so if i now log in um let's say with an email address password and click on login as you can see i've been redirected back towards to the cards page reminding uh the product that was selected okay from the shopping cards so that's what that does all right so when we scroll down so I can now proceed to the checkout page. All right, so this is the checkout page. This is what I have in the checkout page. Okay. The page has loaded up now properly and it shows welcome by the enjoy, which means that I'm logged in. Okay, and also sign out button. 
all right uh, so the first step in the checkout is the billing address okay which has a button here change with a pop-up uh, model all right so if we head back here it shows okay if it is empty the session email echo what sign in but it's echoing sign out that means we are logged in also if it's not empty the session email echo the last name and the first name of the user okay which is concatenated else echo you are not signed in all right so for the first step the billing address it will echo this icon far far check okay if the address the address variable is not empty right in the database which was fetched from the database if it's not empty to echo data that means the user has updated their um, billing address okay so that that is what that means the second part here is if it's not empty, another condition again, the session email it will echo what the user's what last name and the first name will start to upper function, which changes the character to an uppercase character. Okay, so that is why I have an uppercase character here. Alright, so for the that um, address variable, if it is not empty, according to Joe Biden's uh, details in the database of table users the address is empty okay so that is why we don't have this far far check all right so this change this change button okay is a bootstrap model which i have just down here all right this is the model okay So this is the model as you can see here and it says what add address so this is the form so on click of the on of that button which has an on click function of what save address the form will pop out having the first name the last name the mobile and as well as the address okay so um if we head back to our this space our checker does javascript scripts which is in um, php file we can see this all right so once the user clicks on that chain uh, if we head back here open the model clicks on this save button it will echo what please update your mobile number all right Why it didn't echo the the first name or last name of the user is because we we echoed it out here. So we checked for the condition if the session email is not empty, echo the first name. So all this variable first name, last name, address is coming from what we have, uh, what we got from our database. Okay. So if we now feed this out, all right, like eight zero. 36623350 then fill out our address and click on save we can see the, it echoes our address has been updated successfully so but after that after some seconds um it will reload the page and also update the database so this is the script that does that first of all i define the variable f name okay with the selector of f name id dot val function this will get the value of this uh, input okay so the f name which is the first name has an id of what f name so define another variable l name which is the last name at l name dot value then the phone number of what the same so the first condition here the same thing is done for the address i got the value and added it in this variable so the first f name dot trim function if it is equal to empty it checks if that field is empty it will not echo what please enter your first name all right then that id of what f name i changed the css class to border hyphen color to be what red then the same Impute field of an ID of F name will be focused. So the the icon still see what happens here. For example, if I erase the first name of 
this field and click on save it will tell me please enter your first name then once i click on ok the border have changed to red and it has been focused that's where i have my cursor okay so i'll close that so the same thing is done for the last name phone name checks if they are empty the bed then for the phone number you check if the length if it's the character if it's less than 10 or if the character length is greater than 10 then it will echo out this alert message then the address checks if it is empty as well then on my ajax response here to post the variables to our database to update it so i pass this data in this field the first name the last name the phone number as well as the address All right so this is the php script that updates that so if the address form submit is being posted so address form submit which is this okay if it's being posted and it's not empty the post f name the last name is not empty the phone number the address is not empty I'd find a variable of what email to get my session email first name last name phone number address then the country code i embedded the country code here which are concatenated with what the phone number and to update the database so this is the query so after the query is successful it will echo out okay else it will echo out error so this is where i checked if what was echoed was okay right so the success function has a variable of uh, msg message so if it is okay which will be coming from here which means the, the database has been updated i just emptied all the field right that was why when i updated this field uh the first name the last name the phone number the address were all empty so the value that is in that input field were all empty so another thing in is the status message which is up here okay which has a class of our status msg echo the message showing that it was successful all right which has this so your address has been updated successfully all right look another part here this is where i set a timeout for five seconds before the page can reload the reason why i did that so that the um the database can be updated in the browser the user can see that all right so that's what this means set set timeout function then load dot reload function afterwards five seconds so that's what this does okay so that is just about that so when we head back and scroll up so we're done with the first part the billing address the second part the delivery method which is this okay it checks if the delivery uh, variable is not empty before it can echo the file file checkout icon okay on the head just like as he did for the billing address so this shows that this field is being filled out nothing is showing here because uh, nothing has been filled out here all right so that's what that does also inside that it will echo an alert message showing telling the user you selected what whatever delivery he or she selected so that's what that means so this is the button that does that the confirm order button which has an on click uh, event function of what confirm underscore delivery function so when we head back here we can see the function here all right so this is the two input fields that are there um input field type of what hidden id is what billing underscore address value is what the address so what i'm what i did here is just to check if truly the user has updated uh this first part okay if you watch the demo version of this tutorial you see that uh before going in here first of all click on this button and it it i was told alerted that what i should click on change and update my billing address so that is why i have this input field here okay that has an idea of what billing underscore address and the value is coming from this variable 
okay all this variable last name id this is where it's coming from okay as i explained earlier just a reminder all right so that is where it echoed that so once that button is being pushed uh, after defining the variables building on score address with this id selector id the value dot val function then the second variable that i define here is method underscore checked which checks if any of any input field of type of radio button is being checked be it the first one or the second one okay the first one which is what um shipping address is the same as my billing address the second one is pay pickup station okay so this variable check if it is empty for this second condition if it is equal to undefined if it is null if it has no value okay it will echo out what please select any delivery method of your interest after this first condition but this first condition is no longer empty because we have updated our billing address so when i click on this confirm uh, button to tell me what please select any delivery method of your interest so that is why i have this else if okay return force will prevent the page from refreshing all right so if i now fill it up now let me just pick pick up station and click on confirm it to tell me what my delivery method selected is what pick up station i say okay fine that is why i have here so else so if all this condition is is not met then else our ajax request with the type post then the url that we're working with is what delivery underscore update which is this all right so you know what happens next so for the success function which checks past uh, this variable of response checks if it was a a okay like as we have here so if set post delivery so this delivery index name is coming from here okay that i appended in the data it checks also for the method if it is checked okay so this variable is being appended in that url in the data okay if all that is okay it will now update the database i remember i have a variable where i define the country code okay of what plus two three four i concatenated it with the phone number which was passed in the url right so before all these codes will run it will check if the f name is empty the last name sorry i'm not supposed to be there it checks if the post delivery name is empty is being posted okay it's also check if it's not empty the method underscore checked post then it will update what the user set delivery equals to what method that is being checked where the email is equals to what arch email this arch email is coming from the session okay of the user that has logged in all right so when we, we head back and click on okay it will update that if you notice what happened after updating this we can see that our payment method which is the third part has just popped up i will show you how that worked out so if we scroll down now that we have updated our delivery method this is like the condition that was checked to be sure it was updated if it is not empty the delivery method variable echo this out so this is the paypal checkout button okay this will show the the paper button in this panel all right so but if it was empty it will not show that so that is why we are seeing this all right so that is just it so the next part is the other summary okay um in the other summary checks if the shopping cart is not empty in session it will echo what the number of items that are in session that is why i have this count function all right i've explained this in the previous uh, series of this tutorial all right so if we still uh, scroll down 
we can see where the quantity product quantity is being echoed at the price of the product which is coming from this for each loop of the shopping underscore card session okay gets all those uh, but uh, the part I really want to explain here is uh, the total price what happens there all right there's a logic that happens there okay okay this is the delivery fee a fixed fee of what hundred dollar which I just have there then the final underscore price variable is gotten from the addition of the delivery fee and the total price okay the total price is coming from this variable okay which is gotten from the uh, the product price times what the product quantity all right um, I shouldn't be explaining to you how this is being gotten I've explained that uh, many times in this series all right so um, for this line okay I will explain this line but you understand it better when I will be talking about this reading button if it is not empty the virtual underscore price variable okay which was fetched from the database and the final price is equal to the formal price okay so i store the formal price in the database and checks it with the current final price so if it is not equal to that what will be equal to what is the final price the reason why i have that is because um, a user might redeem their price for example what i have here is 150 dollar okay viral scale 247 so when i redeem this i click on redeem it says what well, congratulations my new price is worth 30 dollars okay okay sorry yeah my new price is worth 30 dollars as we can see here okay so when i now go and edit my cards maybe add uh, add another product to it let's say um Other than another product, let's say watch, okay, and head back to proceed to checkout. Okay, you can see what happened here. Everything erased. Okay, the reason why is that is because the final price is no longer the same with what the formal price. So the formal price is also the final price, but it was stored in the database for reference uh, reference purposes. Okay, so when we get back here, you might understand it better. All right. Okay, remember this echoes out if there's no um, products in the session of shopping underscore class uh, cards uh, session name. All right, so you understand this line better if I explained this uh, what this does. So on this on click event of redeem function, okay, when this is being clicked, I'll show you what happens. So if I scroll down. So this is the function once it's been clicked yeah i define the a variable call it price and echo out the final price okay then the voucher price which is what 20 percent off with the promo code 20 percent is 20 over 100 when you divide it, it gets 0 0.2 that's why i have this then the voucher underscore code is what i got that from a form okay dot value with an id of what virtual underscore k code so this is the form it would an input field of what id all right then the first condition i check if the virtual underscore code is empty it will code that cannot be empty then i change the class border color to what red and focus the uh, the cursor icon return false to avoid the page from refreshing else if the code is called virus skill 247 so this is the, pro the promo or you can call it the voucher code that is being checked so if the string entered is equal to this okay then i define a variable i call it total price purchase this is where i made changes in the price so if the price variable price this variable price is coming from here times the voucher price you get the total price purchased okay with the with the edges type post so this is the url that does the magic in the database okay which is redeem underscore code which is this all right so once that is being passed what the variable that i pass is the total underscore uh, purchase variable and the final price all right so 
if the redeem post variable is set and it's not empty the total underscore price purchase index name as well as the former underscore final price all this is coming from from here okay former underscore former price is the price variable as i defined earlier update user set virtual underscore price equals to what the new virtual price okay then former underscore price towards the former underscore plus variable where the email is for search email so once this is being updated so this is my database let me enter this and update that 247 okay i've changed the price so once that is being updated okay we echo that word okay which we check in our sources function okay if the result is equals to okay then you echo this out then reload the page all right so once is this this is being done so look at my database here if i refresh the users table and okay this is the virtual price now 270 and this is the former total price if you can remember take 1350 so now look at what happens here that is where i now check if it's not empty the virtual underscore price okay that's first condition another condition is and if the final price is not equal to the former price that means i've made some changes to the cat product okay so if that condition if this condition is true then echo the virtual price if the form, final price and the former they are the same that means i've not done any changes so echo the what the voucher price else echo the word the former final price i hope that is more understandable all right okay so that is just it i think we are done for this uh series in the next part i will uh, walking you through on the payment methods uh, how to implement that and how we got to the success page if you got value from this tutorial please don't forget to like it and give me a big thumbs up leave a comment if you have any question and i'll see you on the next one